So we'll begin, as always, with a shout out to Squarespace. Thanks for allowing us to be here at CES 2016. This, my friends, is the kind of stuff I get really, really excited about. Portability and performance with no compromises. I was trying to find another P word. It didn't happen. Anyway, this is the ROG XG2, very creatively named. The X is for extreme, the G is for gophers, and the 2 is for second generation. None of which is obviously right. It's external graphics. I don't know what the 2 is. Maybe they had an internal project that got canned somewhere along the way. But this one looks like it turned out pretty darn well. So in terms of the size, I would say it's fairly comparable to that mega thing that I checked out about three years ago. In terms of the functionality, it bears very, very little similarity. So they've got one of those like badass like uh, I did plasma tube things going on in the front. This is a bit of a new look for them. I'm not sure if that's going to make it into the final product or not. Apparently, yes, that will make it into the final product because this is not the final product. Look, the whole thing just like comes apart. So there's a couple cooling fans in the top and what they've got down there looks like a completely custom PCB that is converting two external DC power bricks. So in this case, each of them is about a 220 watt external brick into whatever connectors you want. There's actually a 24 pin ATX connector in there, although I don't know what that would be for in this form factor. But what's actually connected to it now is two PCI Express power connectors and we have a GeForce GTX 980 Ti running in here and it looks like Asus has pretty much gotten around the restrictions in terms of space for GPUs by just making the box a little bit bigger. So you can have tall cards, you can have long cards, you can have rear blower cards, you can put in pretty much whatever you want. But that doesn't mean that the entire ecosystem will be totally open. Asus has not yet determined if the product, while being definitely not validated on other makers' notebooks, will be compatible or whether it will be locked out. And I personally feel pretty strongly it shouldn't be locked out because if you're willing to buy the box, you've already given Asus your money. So let us know in the comments if you agree with me. In the meantime, let's move on a little bit further. So it adds not just display connectivity to your laptop. It not, adds not just more GPU horsepower, but it also acts as a USB hub. And I wonder, does it have a LAN port back here or did you not manage to squeeze that in there? Looks like no LAN port, unfortunately. But that's okay. So basically the way it works is it's using a USB 3.1 Type-C connector with Thunderbolt 3 to get a PCI Express 4X 3.0 link to your graphics card, which is, by the way, more than enough. That's about equivalent to a PCIe Gen 1 16X slot, which is still not a bottleneck today. So they're running all kinds of benchmarks over here on a mystery system that, quite frankly, they're being total assholes about. And here it is. So they're getting a score of 14,000 in Fire Strike, which is pretty darn respectable. You'd probably have to have a quad core CPU for that. Yeah, it turns out they do. So they've got a Skylake Core i7 6700HQ running on this machine. It's got 32 gigs of DDR4 memory, a 512 gig NVMe PCI Express SSD. It's got, uh, I don't know, what else is, they won't tell me anything about it. They're letting me look at the system info in 3D Mark. But what they will not tell me, they'll tell me that the processor, the quad core, like 3.3 gigahertz turbo processor, they're telling me it doesn't throttle, but they're not telling me how the crap they are doing it. Um, I don't believe them that it's an early prototype blah, blah, blah project that doesn't even have a name. It's bullshit because the hinge on this thing is gorgeous. The build quality of it is immaculate. This is not an engineering sample. I don't buy it at all. In terms of I.O., it's got a mini display port. It's got two USB type C's. So one of those is for data over to that external box. And one of them is actually for, uh, for charging power. It's got a headphone jack. It's got a couple. USB 3. Point, probably ones I would guess but who knows they're probably not going to tell me that either it's got a mic it's got an SD card slot and this thing is gorgeous they're telling me the display is 1080p I don't believe them because it doesn't look it doesn't look like it keyboard feels keep okay okay the keyboard's a bit mushy maybe that's something they still have some work to do on but basically if this is 
a quad core that doesn't throttle in this form factor with that external box, then they basically nailed it. Now, the one holy grail thing is whether it can survive being unplugged without causing a system crash because you've effectively just changed the graphics card of a system on the fly. You've hot plugged a graphics card. And let's give them a couple seconds. They're advertising that it is functionality that it will have. They're not necessarily saying that it works now, so maybe it doesn't work yet. Ah, yes. Well, I wasn't going to leave the ASUS booth without breaking at least one demo, so there you go. I broke it, but they've got hopefully at least a few more months to get that fixed, and I think that pretty much wraps up the ASUS booth for me. Thanks for checking out this video, guys, and thanks to Squarespace for allowing us to be here at CES 2016 covering the show. If you guys are looking to build a website, I think you know where to go. Squarespace.com slash Linus. Use offer code Linus and start building your beautiful website today.